Hey, what is up? Leron here. And in this video, we're going to talk about reflected light, okay, which is light that comes from the environment and can influence the subject you're painting regardless of the direct light that hits it, okay? And we have a rare opportunity to really see this in action with a strong, warm, reflected light. So without further ado, let's take it to the table and get started. So let's get started. Here is the drawing stage finished. Um, as I didn't show you how I did it, I will link down below to a high quality picture of this that you can download and then trace perhaps and redraw it the way I have, okay? So two things we wanna focus on. One is definitely that reflected light from below. Notice how it starts very uh, muted and kind of um, gray, slightly warm, and then here it gets really warm and lighter. Okay, so that's the one first thing, let's say, that I want to focus on. Now, the second thing is simply the technique of patching, creating this in patches. So let's um, just try and get the values right in every, um, every place uh, around this uh, portrait, if you will, but it's based on a model, um, but as on a, you know, like a, what do you call it, a Kolk model. Um, so yeah. So what I'm gonna do first is just have this nice little neutral mixture. And the work order is gonna be fairly um, spontaneous. So I'm actually gonna start with uh, the center here. And as you can see, I'm just gonna show you how I go for it. This here has a pretty dark area, okay? So I'm just placing that in. See, dark area. Now, as we move to the left, we have a bit of a lighter and slightly warmer area. So let's get that in. See here, like that. Slightly warmer and goes all the way behind the face, okay? And as we go higher, we have slightly cool, but still pretty dark and strong. So let's try and get that in, like so. You see? Now it does light up as it gets near. Uh, the right side. So I'm gonna come back with some pure water. This isn't necessarily easy, you know, rendering all of these complex shapes uh, like that in one go, but I think it's a really good exercise um, in controlling the paint, and it's kind of similar to the patches exercise I showed you, color patches exercise I showed you, and it's just very useful. So let's move on with this section, fairly dark, you see? And I can actually work around the painting and just continue. You see this area is pretty dark, here's pretty dark, here's pretty dark. I can kind of work around it at my own desired, let's say, uh, pace and order. Um, but you don't have to. You can take a more structured approach, you know, uh, make sure everything is really clear. This area is a little lighter and warmer. And we're not even close to that area at the bottom that's really warm. That's where it's really gonna shine. Now, because I'm doing this kind of a la prima, a lot of the areas um, of the dark and mid value are going to merge together. Uh, so it's not gonna be a perfect result, you know, but I'm fine with that. Um, the, the areas aren't gonna preserve their uh, value, so to speak. It's not gonna stay, um, stay light here and darker there because they mix, you see, but I'm fine with that. My point here is to show you how strong of an impact that reflected light has on the entire thing as a whole. So here we go a little lighter and come back and right down there it gets a little darker again, okay? This is really similar to um, Stan Miller's tutorials here on YouTube that uh, I recommended many times, so you're, it's likely you have seen them at some point. Um, so here we go like this and like that. This is dark, this is dark. Now notice what happens around here. This is where things get really interesting. It just the temperature shoots to the orange of the of the couch. So I'm gonna just take this pyrrole scarlet. That's that's like the warmest color I probably have here, and it gets lighter. So we need lighter and warmer. And I'm just gonna go for it and look at this. See how warm it suddenly gets, and lighter because of the reflected light. Okay. Section here is just a continuation of that, so it's still pretty cool. I could have gone a little cooler just to show the uh, the contrast between the two, but that's fine. Uh, we're also interpreting this into a very simple portrait in a way, just of um, you know, kind of three values, I would say, very simply. Um, 
let's inject more warmth. You see, this is really warm. Then it gets a little lighter, but still pretty warm right around here, you see? So I'm gonna help the paint move there. And then it goes back to this really, really warm temperature. See, like that, all the way to the bottom, like this. So you see this beautiful transition in temperatures provides us with a very interesting impression. It's not that I did a perfect job, but you get the point, hopefully. You see how the temperatures are really different. Now let's uh, blend some, blur some edges, like this edge is a little blended, this on the right. You can just spray some water here and there and you'll hopefully get it to blend. This already, of course, started to dry. It's not the end of the world and I can just soften it up like that. You don't even have to. But you see how that reflected light from the couch or sofa really makes a difference. Uh, then we have this kind of a muted um, brown cast shadow, if you will. Goes around here. Probably needs a little more yellow, like that. So it's fairly dark and warm, like so. Probably a little warmer still, like that. But the sofa itself, and we got a hair here, I'm just gonna let it dry. The sofa itself, especially around the bottom, is very, very warm. You see it's um, kind of a similar value to the shadow on the, the statue or face, whatever. See, kind of like that. And these are both opaque paints, both the yellow and the red, which is why you get this very opaque feeling. Uh, they, very, they, they power uh, each other, overpower each other whenever I put them in, but see like that, here we go. Just to give you a, you know, somewhat of a feeling of the temperature. And then it gets a little cooler here at the back. Not fully. See, like that. And if you want to be more graceful, we can actually merge it with the wall. There's no separation between the two. So kind of like this, miss the chin, whoopsie doopsie. Let's go like that and recreate the shape, that happens, that's fine. The wall itself is almost, you know, cool in comparison. So I'm just gonna put this kind of thing here. And you see how it's a very a la prima piece, not much to it really. And I even got a little lucky with the background, let me show you how. The right side of the brush had a little more warmth to it, so it looks like the statue itself is of dripping warmth towards the left, which is a really nice little effect. Here I'm gonna keep things a little more uh, interpretive. Now we do have that left section with the eye fairly, the eye socket fairly light. So let's just get that in. See like that, connect it with the background even. That's even better. And the eye on the other end. And the mouth here can be better defined. So I'm just gonna go like this. Same for this shadow, same for that shadow. And you see what a huge role reflected light and temperature plays here. Um, it's really important to, to pay attention to these things. And again, you could go at it a bit of a, I think a better route would be to just have everything neutral and just this warmth here. Because this warmth kind of detracts from it but I did recognize there was some warmth there, so I wanted to show that. But you see how this section here, it's really important to get that difference in temperature and that feeling of light reflecting from the, from the sofa, from a lighter object. Light is, reflected light is always at play. Even when you don't really see it that clearly, like here, uh, it is uh, very common. And so I think it's important to this even makes this a better example because you can, here you can really, I want to spritz it a bit, uh, but here you can really, just wanted to blend this edge, here you can really see it, which makes it such a useful uh, example once again. And one last touch, and then we'll wrap it up that I just remembered. Look at the nose. There is a bit of a darker spot here. So we'll get that in. And now I'm gonna remove the tape and we can wrap it up. So here we go, let's slowly remove it. I just wanted to wait for it to dry and flatten a bit. And here we go, that's one, that's two, that's three, 
and four. And I think this adds a nice little border to it. I hope you enjoy this one. Now let's wrap it up face to face. So this is it for this one. I really hope this rare chance of seeing this uh, helps you better understand how reflected light works. Uh, and it's written that in this example, it's more like these are some dark spots and then the rest is a little lighter. Sometimes it can even be more extreme with all of this section dark and then just a sliver of a lighter line. Okay, so there are multiple examples of this that I hope I can research and share with you in the future. I want to thank you so much for watching and I would really appreciate it if you drop a like if you enjoyed this video, comment down below and maybe share it with someone you you know will find it helpful it really helps this channel grow thank you so much and we'll see you again in the next one real soon